In this video, what we're gonna do is go through and price out a brand new computer as if I was going to be building it myself. I'll talk about why I'm going to go with these parts, talk about different options, other websites if you don't wanna build it yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go through this build. Um, now, for those not interested uh, in building a computer from scratch, I definitely recommend going with a system integrator like an Origin PC, like a CyberPower PC. Um, these companies use off-the-shelf parts, and um, what that means is it's gonna be much easier to upgrade or replace those parts uh, when the time comes without having to completely start from scratch. Uh, companies like Dell, HP, use a lot of their own custom made parts um, for uh, power supplies, motherboards, things like that, CPU coolers. So it can be harder to upgrade or replace parts be because of that. Um, definitely do some research into which system integrator to go with. The costs um, between systems can vary. Um, and sometimes that's because of shipping and the packaging they use. Customer service could also be um, important and something to consider. So look into those um, as well. Uh, so with the processor, I went with the Core i5-12600K here, really kind of middle of the road-ish um, in terms of performance. And some of that, the majority of that has to do with just kind of the budget we're sticking with, right? Around $1,500. So if you got a little bit more money to spend, you could definitely spend, um, do more there. But you also have to think about what you're trying to prioritize. And with this build, uh, and in general for a computer that's gonna be used for 3D animation and rendering, um, I'm putting as much performance as I can into the graphics card or getting the best graphics card I can. Um, and that's what I'm most concerned with. So while Cinebench results are great, um, I would consider the single score um, single core score to be the most influential thing um, score I'm looking at here, uh, because that's mainly gonna be impacting my viewport performance and things like that. Uh, Multi-core score here, also good if you're going to be rendering on your processor, if you're gonna be using the standard render, physical render, or another one that utilizes that. Even simulation now has done a lot on the graphics card. So while, you know, Threadripper and the Core i9s are great, um, you know, that comes with a lot of additional costs. I also wanna point out here that Apple's chips are quite good when it comes to single core score, which means viewport performance wise, they should do pretty good. They lack um, you know, a lot of rendering capability. They're also a lot more expensive um, or can be than what we're gonna be spending on our processor. There is a separate um, benchmark that CG Director has for viewport performance. And in fact, CG Director has a lot of really good information if you're interested in trying to build your own computer or figure out what's the best GPU brand or, or things like that. Um, they even have their own build guides and articles. So I would definitely use them as a um, resource as well. Uh, here though, for the viewport performance, they have mostly um, Apple chips. They don't have a lot of up-to-date Intel or AMD chips. So just keep that in mind. You know, If you were to really compare the performance of the 5900X in viewport speed compared to Cinebench, um, you would see it's, you know, around here, right? So Intel's newest chips are gonna be up there with the, the Apple ones. We're just not seeing that. And that's why I'm, I would refer more back to this. So, um, you know, that's why I went with this chip. Um, what I would say is if you're looking, uh, you know, keep in mind the um, performance boost clock or the single core kind of frequency or speed that a it can it can get to or be boosted to as that's going to be kind of your best indication of um, performance uh, you'll notice the ones that go higher are actually more expensive and that's you know something we are trying to balance here you know how fast our processor is with cost because we want to save some money for the graphics card so um, the oh shoot I don't even remember what I got now um, the chip I had chosen, where was it? The 12600, it wasn't the K, it was the i5. Um, I don't think it was this one. Um, was it this one? Even that looks looks like it could work. Uh, no, it was this one, the 12600K. Um, you know, gets up to 4.9 gigahertz, which isn't bad. And if we wanted to overclock, I think you can with these, but honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, it does have integrated graphics, which can also be very helpful. Um, in, I believe it would be possible to run a display off of that and then have the graphics card render. Eh, don't quote me on that. Don't guarantee, I don't guarantee that. But yeah, that's why I went with that processor. Um, for the cooler, this processor doesn't come with one. That might 
uh, be something to look into because some processors do come with coolers. Uh, so that might mean we could get away with a little bit more expensive of a CPU here because well, this cooler isn't cheap. Um, could maybe go a bit cheaper, but Noctua is a very well-known brand when it comes to cooling, when it comes to fans. And so I think this cooler should work pretty well. When it comes to motherboards, we have the Gaming Pro. Um, what I was looking for with this um, was really um, if it had Wi-Fi and if it would have the additional slot for um, a graphics card. A lot of these will have additional slots. Uh, let's see if this one shows us. Yeah something like this, um, but not all these slots are gonna be usable. You know, sometimes there's connectors down here, which can be hard um, to get a graphics card into that slot if those connectors are there. Um, using some of these other slots means we have, you know, less room. So this one actually looks pretty good, um, but you know, not all of those slots are the same speed or created equal. And so you definitely wanna do some research. Um, output is definitely important input output. You know, having these built-in connectors um, for the integrated graphics can be helpful. Having a USB-C, perhaps even Thunderbolt port could also be um, useful. So um, definitely, you know, good things there. I actually don't know why I didn't go with that one um, previously, although maybe it's because it didn't have a price. Um, that was probably it. Uh, so yeah, that's what you want to look into. I think I had this one here. Um, although I thought it had more pictures. Um, but yeah, it can be hard to sometimes see what ports input output, um, you know, motherboard has. I probably just would Google it. It'll come up very quickly. Uh, for the RAM here, um, I went with uh, a two uh, by 32 gigabyte kit. It's not the fastest. And this may be one of those things where perhaps I, get, I go down to a 32 gigabyte kit, two times 16 sticks. Um, in order to get faster memory, knowing I can I can perhaps upgrade down the line. Um, you know, we also have a little bit of wiggle room here, so I might be able to do a little bit better with the speed. But 64 gigabytes, two slots means I'm gonna have two slots left. I can add additional RAM um, down the road. And so RAM wise, I'm looking at capacity first, speed second. Um, storage, this is something else kind of slacked a little bit on. Um, this drive is only one terabyte. And that's a bit small, I think, for um, you know, kind of your main drive, the drive your OS is going to be on. Um, and I really did this just to stay under budget. But if I had a little bit more room, I mean, even for double that price, closer to $100, I can get a two terabyte or more um, M.2 drive. And I would also do some research into M.2 drives because they're not all created equal. Um, there can be quite a difference in speed as well. And I, I wonder if this one being as cheap as it is, isn't maybe not quite as fast as some of the other options out there. Um, graphics card. This is one where I spent the most time doing um, research for this. And I would recommend you do the same as well. Octane Bench is kind of the one I would go to um, because you can filter by single GPU results. You can see the relative performance here. Um, and we can see that our 4070 is no slouch. You know, yeah, it's about half the speed as a 4090, but it's, you know, three times cheaper or something like that. Um, you could also maybe look for used uh, graphics cards if you wanted to maybe go a little bit higher and still try and s stay in that same budget. Obviously, there are risks associated with that, so you definitely want to be careful there. Um, CG Director does have some Redshift benchmarks. Um, as I was saying about the Octane ones, you can't filter these down to a single GPU, so you kind of just have to you know, look for a specific card. But what you can do here is search performance per dollar, and you know, you'll see kind of the top contenders here. It's that 4070, it's that 4060 Ti. Um, all things being equal, you know, between the 4060 Ti and the 4070, I really like the additional VRAM. Um, that means I'm going to be able to um, render more complex, heavier scenes um, faster. Because when you render, um, your entire project textures all have to be able to fit in video RAM in order to get the best performance. Once Redshift or Octane have to, you know, deal with projects larger than the amount of VRAM, VRAM you have, um, things tend to slow down quite a bit. So um, that was really the reason for going with the 4070 there. Um, next up, case, didn't get too crazy with that. You know, for a $1,500 build, I tried to get a decent case um, that, you know, would last a while, Could I could use for a few builds um, and, you know, not be too... Uh, ugly. Um, power supply was a, another tricky one and, and one that I wanted to be, 
really be careful of because the idea here is that you know we can we have enough room to add a second graphics card so while you know it's right now it's saying we're only using 490 watts in which case this power supply is absolutely overkill uh, the idea is um you know we would have that additional room for a second graphics card and right now is not a great kind time to get a graphics card with 4080s and 4090s being harder to get or being more expensive than their MSRP. Um, I think like the 4080 Super and, and whatnot is around the corner. So, you know, that's another reason to maybe not go as expensive as you can on the graphics card uh, and save some of that money for a, you know, a new or an additional graphics card, uh, perhaps a bit sooner. Um, that's pretty much it. I will mention there's some other useful, I think I already mentioned the motherboard things here. You know, we can see that this slot, yeah, it's by four, um, but should still work, you know, just fine for a graphics card. So we're in luck there. Um, and when it comes to the power supplies, looking at your PCIe connectors, if I haven't mentioned that yet, is also really nice, you know, because uh, we're gonna need those for a second graphics card. So having some additional ones is super important. Um, and I, I'm not entirely sure. So we could definitely get another 4070. I don't know where that would start to be a problem exactly. But, you know, once again, look into it, do some research, see what connectors, you know, when you're getting ready to add or upgrade um, graphics cards. So um, there's the system we ended up with. You know, the next things I would prioritize um, if I had a little bit more money, maybe graphics card, once again, definitely hard drive perhaps RAM and processor. There's, those would be the big ones. Um, you know, the processor, I'm not, like I said, as concerned with. I'm pretty sure you could even go to some newer chipsets, the 1300 or 1400 series um, with this motherboard, um, which allows you to upgrade it for quite a while um, and keep, you know, that performance. And that's an, an, you know, a huge advantage over a traditional desktop compared to a laptop or even something like a Mac where you are very limited in the number of upgrades um, you can do and, and how long you can prolong the life of your computer. Um, but with that, that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you could like as well as subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.